Um, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, my name is Noriko Mizumoto. Today I'd like to uh, introduce how the localization team is doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Before I start talking about the localization, I'd like to introduce a little bit about the uh, art of technology of Japan. Maybe some of the people knows about the Toto's company in Japan. Uh, this is a little bit the embarrassing experience from uh, five, six years ago by myself. Um, it is not the first time, but the total technology is so advanced and every year is changing. That time, um, the first time to see this one, I saw this device, and then I got in the room, and then do the things what I need to do, and try to exit from the room. But before I exit the room, I have to press the buttons, or I have to use the lever, and try to find that the buttons, levers, everywhere, but I can't find it out. I will show you the entire device, the state of the technology from now, a bit embarrassing you. This is I got. So I did everything down. I need to fresh it, but can't find it the lever or buttons to fresh it so that I can get it out from this room, right? And then at that time, uh, this is the one. It says they are uh, already English, but when I got in there, there is no English, only the Japanese. So if I am the English speakers, totally I have no idea which buttons to press. And then finally, I got found this device. It says, hover my hand, it will flash. It was first experience for myself, because flashing means press the buttons or deliver, but not hover my hand. It just hover my hand, it's fresh. It's surprising, embarrassing technology I encountered. Now these days, total, total uh, develop this one. Now no lever, no hover the hands. It's you know, it enter in the room. The lid is automatically open. You did everything you have to do, and then walk away. Everything done. Flash, lit, lit the back. No hover, no hover hands. Just walk away. It looks after everything. So this is totally different from the localization. What I wanted to tell you is, this is the one, this is the one, and that one, if you guys only speak English and there is a no English in there, it is useless for the people who doesn't understand the Japanese for this technology. I wanted to tell you how the localization is important for the fedora itself. English fedora is sometimes useless for non-English speakers. Okay. This is, looks like an English written fedora page. And this is how we translate it. It is translated in uh, Polish, translated in Czech, translated in Albanian, translated in German, translated in Japanese, more and more, and in French and other languages, so that every non-English speakers uh, happily and understand what is going on, what is the uh, technology that the Fedora is for the providing to the users. Uh, to do the localization, we the every application need internationalization first. Otherwise, localization cannot be done. It's kind of the preparation to done the proper localization. But I am not from the internationalization team, so I just give you a small tips about what is the internationalization, what is the important things to remember. It's uh, both side of the uh, localizer, also the uh, developers.
the fields when developers <coughs> create their own application, I like emphasize that please think about to uh, make your application the uh, internationalization toolkit compatible. It's like a get text or logging tools, it depending on what uh, languages you are using, it is probably easier for you guys to surf the internet which one is for you. But make sure that the international relation toolkit compatible so that makes much easier later on to the application internationalized and then localized. The second second one is write in English. So for Japanese developer tends to write in Japanese uh, partially or entirely, then in open source, more other developers can join, contribute, improve, or send a patch to improve the uh, coding itself. It is good to have everything in English so that other developers can understand your application itself. And from the third is more problematic for the uh, localizer translators. Uh, add plural forms. Without the plural forms, sometimes it's really hard for the translators to translate. For Asian language, we do not have a plural form. So singular or plurals, we do this exactly the same translation. <coughs> but for the French or the German, the other email team has a plural form. So they have to have uh, separate strings to translate singular format and then a plural format, even with the sentence exactly the same. And the numbering substitutions also be problematic for the uh, <coughs> translation team. If you use exactly the same substitutions, then we cannot change the orders. But uh, many languages have their own grammar um, different from the English. So sometimes we need to flip the substitution, but if substitution doesn't have any numbering, we can't do that because it it been fed in the order which uh, which comes from the first in English format. So the numbering does help a lot. Uh, we sh um, give you the another example like one, two, three, four, five. So it's in the English order. But if it translated in the Japanese, we have to change the order. Number two comes first, three, then one, and <coughs> two, and five. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. What does it mean? Output is uh, 2nd of August, Tuesday, 10 o'clock. In English, should say uh, second of Tuesday, 2nd of August, 10 o'clock. But in, Jap in Japan, it is a different order. That's why that we really like to have a numbering for the substitutions. Uh, and the last one is uh, do not cut it off the words in the sentence. Like uh, it says that uh, this rule is applicable to blah, the substitutions. The one sentence we are easy to translate, but if cut it up in the each terms, then it's really hard to give a correct translation. And then we try to give a correct translation, but it's going to be the literal. So that once that is uh, consists in the one sentence in the program as, as output, it looks like uh, sometimes funny translation, so it impacts the uh, quality of the application <coughs> itself. And then that means the user face quality is sacrificed because of this. So make sure that how it lo looks like before cutting the uh, sentence. Um, there are more probably the questions about the internationalization, but as I said, I'm not coming from the internationalization, and then it's lucky that we have a couple of internationalization team on board on this clock, and one person 
Code Pravin is going to give a session about the globalization audit of Fedora Atomic. Please join his uh, talk and then uh, any internationalization pro problems or the questions, I believe that he can answer uh, more in details. <coughs> okay, let's talk about the localization. What we are localizing? We localize websites. We localize, of course, Fedora itself. This is the installer and the package name is Anaconda. Again, this is Anaconda. We do a lot of the packages in Fedora as well. <coughs> so this is a login screen. This is actually the GDM, the combination of the GDM and the GNOME shell packages. Once login, we will see uh, this screen, uh, setup screen. This coming from GNOME initial setup packages. That means Mo many of the Fedora translator also contribute to the GNOME project itself. And then some of us even contribute to the LibreOffice as well, or the Mozilla project. We work a uh, multiple project to form the uh, nice, complete form of Fedora. We work on the wiki page. It's more free format that each team may have their own uh, language team pages that we do uh, translate the wiki page as well. And then last one is the documentation, the installation guide, system administration guide, many of the guides are published from the uh, documentation team who will localize those guides as well. But at this moment there is some uh, publishing tool issues on the documentation team side so we do translate, but unfortunately we cannot publish our localized documentation at this moment, and hopefully the problem will be solved soon. Yes, yeah, we can translate, but can't publish at all. Why is there the name Fedora Translate? That's strange to me. You're talking about the translation yeah, quality? Uh, weird. Yeah. Normally we don't translate um, at once. So Fedora Workstation has to be Fedora Workstation in every, every language. Um, normally in Polish, Fedora should be Fedora. We should yeah. create Fedora. Yeah, many of languages, yes, Fedora is Fedora. We don't translate. Maybe others. The question okay. you get an answer because it's my English. What's your question? No, the question is why the <coughs> name Fedora is translated. I, I, I will not translate your name. Your name is your name. It's not translated. Uh, we use uh, suffixes in Polish language. It's obligatory in our language because otherwise it looks like uh, using, uh, it's like not using plural in, in, in English. You have S at the end in plural. Somebody might may ask uh, why uh, you have Computer, yeah. computer. That's S that's S why S you S have then to be, to rebuild the whole sentence so that you don't have to use the, the, the plural. But the door has no plural at all. Mm -hmm. The door is the door. There is only one the door. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, uh, language language rules are stronger. Mm. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's 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 the in a way that it sounds natural. We mm -hmm. without changing it in a way. Yeah. So. We use it for everywhere, and Fedora is not an exception. Yes, it's a complex language. And uh, do you translate Fedora Workstation? Or do you um, like it? I don't think maybe, so. maybe it's, it's, if it's so long, Fedora Workstation, mm -hmm. maybe, no, we don't. Yeah. Maybe we can I discuss can about the later in the workshop that <coughs> we are going to have. So in let me... Polish, Move next slides, please. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce where the translation activity sits in the development cycle. 
Uh, this is the uh, schedule, Fedora schedule. The uh, only shows up the uh, key milestones, and there is a software string freeze date. This date is exactly the developer has to stop, edit, or add, or delete the strings, but they have to finalize their uh, string part of the uh, of the application so that the translator can start translation and make it 100% translated. If the developer break this date, then we give the 100% translation, but still the application will not be localized 100%. So this is the date is very important, the possible from the developer to the translators. And the next comes to the uh, deadline of the software that we stop the uh, translation and give the ball back to the developer. So the developer will start pull the latest translation build, make sure the build is same, and put it back to the Koji. So that will come up as a release, next release. A little bit scroll down, then we'll see a <coughs> detailed schedule. In here, for the translation schedule, we, it will explain more about, we do have a QA test period as well. So more detailed schedule we can find in terms of the translation team. Also, as I explained, the document, we, do the document, uh, we do translate the documentation, we do translate the website. It is those are depending on the website team or the documentation team. So usually we go in the <coughs> documentation team schedule, when is the string freeze date for the release notes, or when the uh, string freeze date for the website itself. And the last one is uh, upstream project schedule. As I explained, the GNOME, some of the GNOME part will come in the Fedora. Some of the LibreOffice part come in the Fedora. Some Mozilla part come in the Fedora. But which part will come out? It says that exactly the which version of the GNOME will come in the Fedora 25. Which version of the LibreOffice will come in the Fedora 25. So according to those information that the translator will work or focus on those versions to get in the Fedora 25. Uh, language teams. We do have 81 language teams at this moment in 875 translators registered. I think we are one of the biggest sub-projects under the Fedora project. I don't say that all of the 875 translators are active at the moment, but at least they are registered, and then they are potentially come up and being active in and out, in and out. We have our own homepage. It's uh, Fedora project slash wiki slash Elton N, all the information in there. We do have a bi-weekly meeting on the RSC as well. Yes. Uh, <coughs> registered translators is uh, people uh, in uh, Zanata teams on the platform fedora.zanata.org. This is how you count it? 875 counted from the uh, trans at least mailing list registration. Okay, it's the number of person registered on trans. Yes, that's right. Um, that's so there the might be more who who not registered in this mailing in this <coughs> mailing list, but only in a local mailing list. <coughs> but basically, we ask the tra new translators to join this main mailing yeah. list as well as the local mailing list. So, so suppose to this when one. When we are writing, we are writing to yeah. mailing nine hundred persons. Yes. Okay, how to join a language team? If new and interested in localization, this is how that how to join a language team. We do have a, a more kind, user-friendly guide written in a wiki page, which can be found in the home page. Uh, basically, what the new person has to do is uh, create FAS. That's every contributor do. <coughs> 
and subscribe mailing list that we, we just talked about. Uh, one uh, trans at the list of federal project org that this is mailing list every translator required to join. The second one is a language specific mailing list for a Japanese trans dash JA uh, mailing list and French has their own mailing list. In this mailing list can be discussed about the uh, language specific Problem or the goals or what about the problems, and they can speak in their own languages as well. And sign to the Zanata because the, most of the package is registered in the Zanata, and then we are using the Zanata as our translation platform. And then we can start translating. In the previous wiki page guide. Uh, consists of six sections, but to start with the translation, we only need one to three sections. Four, five, six is more like additional information, how to proofreading, how to make sure no error for the packages, but basically we need only one to three sections, that's all. And in section 2.3, there is the section called Introduce Yourself. This is most important part if the join team. Um, it's not the technical technical part, but this is a communication part, communicating with the other team, with the other translators. Say what to say. Say hello to the others to start the team working is very important. If you work here and then other team work over there and then there is no communication, then it's funny, isn't it? It's like working on the same language team, then it is nice to help e each other. If say, hello, where I am the new, can you help me, blah, then the other person can help you, but say nothing, and then the other person can't help you at all. So the communication is important, and this is the very first part very first part to introduce yourself into the team. I just brought up some uh, neighbors language teams. Uh, there is a Polish team led by Piotr. There is a Czech team, there is a Hungarian team, there is a Slovak team, there are the German team as well. If anything any problem, any questions, any translation, Ella, probably the coordinator, uh, talk to the coordinator, coordinator are happy to fix it or discuss it. Fedora Hub, in the initial keynote, we <coughs> learned a little bit about the uh, Fedora Hub, and then translation team and then design team are looking at to connect the uh, all localization team, Zanata workflow, translation work, work process, connecting to the Fedora, Fedora Hub so that we are more easily to access <coughs> Zanata, easily, no, easily to learn more information from the Hub in one place. But I can't have anything to show you today, but uh, there is an infra infrastructure workshop on 4th of August Thursday, starting 1.30 to 3.30. We are free to talk about third questions, give, re, give us suggestions, what we, as a translator, what we want to have in the trans, uh, Fedora Hub. So please encourage yourself to join this workshop to talk about how to improve the Fedora Hub in terms of the localization. Uh, let me introduce a little bit about the Zanata, how we work with Zanata. Uh, put in the uh, web browser fedora.org, then this login screen comes up. It's a very simple work. Click on the uh, right hand top log in, then the second login screen comes up. This is actually comes from the Epsilon. Open ID, developed by Patrick. I can see him in this room. This is his application. 
through uh, this application, connect the uh, uh, Zanata to the uh, FAS system so that we make sure that only the translator who has a FAS account can access, in, access to the zanata.org uh, applications. The uh, username and the password from the FAS account, and then we can go in the dashboard of the own dashboard. From there, say if I wanted to continue the translation previously work, then go to the uh, history activities and click the link. Say I used to work the Anaconda the yesterday, click this link and then I can move to the uh, Anaconda project page to start the translation. Or I started a newly new project then in the search field <coughs> on top, uh, put in the project name to search and then enter, then it goes to that project page. It looks like this. This is an Anaconda project page. Some project page has uh, multiple versions. The other project has only one version, most likely master version. If there is on, only one version, then the translator simply work on the master version, and then that translation will go into the uh, latest release. But if the project has uh, multiple versions, then what we have to do is, uh, currently we are in the Fedora 25 release development cycle, find out the F25 branch in here. If there is F25 branch, then work on it. That will go into F25, trans uh, F25 release. If we pick master while there is F25, master is for the future, so it's not wasting, but it goes to the future, not the current release. So as long as there is F25 or the current release branch, working on that branch so that it can go the current release. At this stage, there is no F25 branch. That means Anaconda team doesn't create F25 branch yet. So we still be able to work on the master branch. And then Anaconda team will copy the master branch create the new F25 branch and upload it. From that point, translator can start F25 branch for specifically the F25 release. Click the, uh, because there is a no F25 branch, click the master branch this time. It shows up like this. Um, click on language, say this time click the Polish. And then right hand side, number three, it shows a document. Most <coughs> likely the project has only one document, but sometimes one project has two documents, and that means you have to work on the two documents to complete that application, especially that application. This time only one documentation, so click the button manager. This is called the uh, editor screen, where we can add the translation, edit the translation, delete the wrong translation. The left hand side is a source, English. So we can see it, but we, ca we can't touch it. So even click it, we, we can touch it, we can edit it, we can edit it, we can delete it. So it is safe. Sometimes we say we, when we localize in the, uh, editors then easily to accidentally touch the source, source English and we change it, that can lead to the error when, they, when the developers package that uh, translation so that they give up to include the translation. But using the Zanata, we don't, we cannot touch the uh, English source, so it is safe, safe way, not accidentally touch the English code, but we can translate in the right hand side the add the, uh, the uh, translation. Um, can you choose other languages sources? The language source is the left hand side in English? No, but I mean, so for example, could one choose Russian on one side and say Japanese on the other? Because we have people speak Russian and people speak English. Mm. Yes, you can. <coughs> okay. yeah. So on the menu on the um, right hand side, you can set the source language to any other language. 
the menu is there's very little on the right. Yep. Technically, it can be done, but if the source is Russian, and then the developer requires uh, Spanish translation, imagine the, how many translators can transfer from Russian to Spanish. That means some do, some do understand Russian and Spanish in the same time. It's a very small amount of resource. So that in, in, in the beginning, I explained that write in English. So that the, many of the translators do understand English. So, so that can be translated in many other languages. So if even the developers speak Russian, then I encourage that developer to grab some English speaking, well English, English speakers to translate the, his Russian into the uh, English first, and put <coughs> put the uh, application, put the uh, translation English source as English source, so that the many other languages can translate. But put as a uh, Russian as a source, it really hard for us to translate because I don't understand the Russian, so I can translate from English to Japanese, but I can't translate Russian to Japanese. I just explained a very brief essential information about the Zanata. And lucky again, we have a Zanata development team on board on the flock. And he's going to present more detailed Zanata session, which happens today, 2.30 to 3.20. So please join his session with a bunch of questions and then shoot him until he died. <laughs> Okay, that's all from me. Uh, my name is Noriko. Any questions or any suggestions, uh, just come to me after the sessions or you can send me an email, noriko at redhead.com, or I'll be on IRC. Usually I'm on the Fedora Dash D 11 n channels in the Austrian time, 9 to 5. So just pin me, my nickname is N O R I K O. So any questions? I'm not sure I can answer everything, but yes. Uh, can you tell us the um, history of, um, <coughs> of um, localization steering committee? History and of the, localization. The language uh, testing group or the reform? Uh, right, uh, localization history and the uh, testing group. Localization team actually starting almost the same time in that where the Fedora started in 2003. Uh, before the Fedora started, the Red Hat has Red Hat Linux, not the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat uh, selling the Red Hat Linux or the open source contributed. Red Hat decided to have uh, separate the Red Hat Enterprise Linux and then Fedora so that uh, Red Hat will fork the Fedora as a Red Hat Enterprise Linux as the other doing the same thing. Since then, that the most of the Red Hat developers contribute to the Fedora. So as the Red Hat translator contribute to the uh, Fedora localization itself as a beginning. And then we started to more encourage the uh, community people to join and take the lead. Um, many of the language are now led by the non Hat, <coughs> but the period community translators. Even the Japanese team has their own lead, not me, but their own lead. So we are getting grown bigger and bigger. In terms of the uh, testing group, this is a little bit uh, programmatic area that we need more resource. Preparation for the testing is uh, testing is a very important part to keep uh, good quality for the localization because <coughs> we work in the Zanata, but we don't know how the string comes up in which situations. But through the uh, testing, 
we actually see uh, the application as the operating system so we can see how the string comes up and check it and then the uh, quality is good or bad and then we can change in the Zanata. But the testing is we need uh, some resources to communicate with the release engineering team, also the QE team to set up the uh, test, test days and prepare the testing itself. And at this stage, there is uh, only one or two people from Red Hat, but definitely we are short of the resource and we like to have more people join join on board for the uh, testing group. Yes? How um, much interaction do you have with other projects? Sorry? Um, so I, I would guess that a lot of the terms that have been translated um, would be very similar to many other computer applications. Um, and you said many people also work on several different projects. Yeah. Um, is there any way to share uh, previously done translations? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, we do, I haven't, I haven't tried to count <coughs> how many packages we are translating, it's so many, more than 100. Um, then in Zanata there is a uh, called translation <coughs> memory. So all the translations are kind of uh, stored as a data and then we can refer to it and then there is a copy buttons. So we found the similar translation or the good quality translation in the translation memory. We can, we can simply click the copy, bu copy buttons. It comes up in the uh, translation uh, field in the editor and then probably a little bit tweak needed so that basically we can share the database with, within the uh, language team. And then how is quality done? You mentioned quality yep. translation. Um, do, do people vote or how, how uh, is this managed? I mean there is uh, another function called the review. Once translated, it says uh, as the status is translated in Zanata. And then another person, it's called a reviewer, has a reviewer permission in Zanata. That person reviewed that strings a market review, approved or rejected. Approved means this is good quality. And then the status changed to the review approved or rejected so that somebody has to redo the translation. But if marked as a review approved, that means the quality is good. So everything the Zanata is a pretty much smart, user-friendly, translator-friendly platform, which is also used by the OpenStack project as well. So we'd like to spread to GNOME itself. GNOME is using, at the moment, Damlai, pretty much a manual, so. And how do the translation team can tell to the project to not take strings that are not reviewed? Yes, a uh, small translation team, say uh, only a few active translators, is at the moment focusing on the 100% translation rather than the review. So those team haven't got the review at all. But probably, <coughs> yeah, from now on, we should encourage the, that teams to review more essential, like Anaconda or the essential packages to make sure that the quality is good. Okay, but does it exist in Zanata a, a way? Uh, I, as a French coordinator, I, will, I want to say this project is under the review process. If the content has not been reviewed or approved, I don't want it to go uh, live uh, in, in the user hands. Can, uh, is there a way to, to, to tell the, the, the project manager uh, this is our, our way to work for mm. this uh, translation, so we can manage quality, does it exist? That is, there is such a feature, but that feature is only handled by the de developers. So developers can decide the translation can only used as a review the translation. But if, click, if he used that features, that can affect all languages. 
that's not owning a French. Yeah. It's, it's a translator decision. It's mm. a developer of, uh, of, uh, of yeah. the tool. Yeah. I cannot say to my, to my neighbor, I agree. translating in Polish, you should work that way. It depends on the way the Polish community is, is mm. organized. And stuff. Yeah. Probably we can discuss about that point. I agree on that, on the uh, workshop we pre prepared. So that, uh, I don't know, I, I believe that another team will join that workshop. So, yeah, that, that part, I, I can't do anything at all, but the Zanata team can do something else for us. I can share a bit more information during the workshop, obviously. Great. Some how the community actually uh, handles all these situations, so we can talk about outside this. And as I like to tell you, that I'm a developer and I'm often in contact with uh, translators if I have some messages. <coughs> It's not like that, that I, I cannot con uh, contact with the uh, translator, translators. I, I, I can and I do it. Yeah, I think we have I saw him with translation right now. I get my press account. Uh, I introduce myself uh, to the local language, as there are the people who are working with me. And, uh, I subscribe also the uh, role list, uh, I call it. And then I go in over to Sanada, uh, make there my account, and then I start in translation. And uh, two years later, I will recognize I'm still translating there. I'm not part of the Tigora project. I have just the group membership CLA and uh, the uh, other one, but I'm not the translator of this thing. I have I have just CLA. As uh, nobody um, puts me in a group inside the door. Oh, uh, which language? So I have no all it's all languages. Mm -hmm. If you look, uh, we have uh, there right now in an thing with the pump skill where is it? Oh, he's already active in translation, and what I do then is make uh, an IRC dot uh, info and, and a username, and I don't see the CBS 10 uh, LN, so, uh, you know, yes, mm. yeah, and in, 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 so I have to look up in Sanada, yeah, but in Sanada I don't see that he active or not, that's the next issue, I just see he has an account. Uh, no, actually it can be Zanata. <coughs> you can actually check the individual statistics um, if you have really? an account in Zanata, yes. So it's if you go to your profile... <laughs> that it, that it, that it would be new, or I don't find it. I, ha I have really all... Uh, yeah, so, so it's open for public, so anyone that has an account in Zanata, you can actually log in and search for the username. You can see his uh, individual's contribution throughout the year. Whichever that's, time period that you spoke. That's good. But yeah. then I have to see where the link is for that. Yeah, okay. I can okay. show you. Uh, sure. yeah. well, it's not a problem. Yeah, there's but, another, but obviously there's some miscommunication yeah, between the, you and your people. Um, yeah, but, but the, but the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the group's problem still stands. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I think there's probably some miscommunication between you or probably, I'm not sure how it's been. I thought it was there. Yeah, we better to look closer at your problem. No, to but, it, but it is in general, there, there is no uh, translators group anymore as you don't want to use CBS. Uh, okay, I'm not anymore. So, and if the people really just go to Sanada and translate them, uh, they are not officially uh, the Dora members, then they have some rights, not because they cannot go and vote for council, <coughs> or they cannot go and vote for PESCO, because they have no other uh, group as a CLA. So, it's a, it's a problem, it's uh, recently, I think you are Patrick. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, the, the, well, there is a, a strong problem, and we actually, there is four votes existing for documentation. The authorization group of paths you are talking about, yeah. but they are not really used. But recently, because of spam problem, we, we translator need to be in groups if we want to use uh, the the Wiki, for example. Yeah. And so this revealed that the the first groups were not actively used anymore. 
So there is a question actually. So should we have every translator in that kind of group, or, or should we not? And this is mostly a technical or, or, or process uh, way of thinking. The biggest problem is are the translators <coughs> active members of the federal project? Or just uh, the different uh, stop by say, okay, some mistake, a correct uh, uh, and goodbye. How do you make the translator part, part of the, the federal project more globally? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's something that, that looks a uh, bigger problem to me than the, I need the, the, the fast group. The fast group is a, it's technical. It's Maybe we technical, yeah. finish this sessions so and get together closer so we can yeah. discuss, yeah? Yes. So we were facing the problem with the ambassador group. Like there were so many ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Almost 50% were inactive for, for more than a year. Mm. Uh, so even in the local <coughs> side, uh, so I was looking for uh, Portuguese group. There are 19 countries as well. Yeah. So how do I know that out of all those are active or how, how many of those are non-active? Non well, there is a no markup for the automatic status that it is this person is active, this person is inactive. More likely in terms they uh, regularly comes up <coughs> in a mailing list and then help the people or submitting the translation itself. It, 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 it really depending on the teams, but for the Japanese, if the people um, one translator, translator, one, uh, um, one packages, then that person's will one post into the mailing list, hey, I completed this package translation, somebody please review this translation, and then other person comes up and give a review. So sort of the communication back and forth, back and forth, I called those persons are the active, while the other person just reading the mailing list, do nothing is inactive. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.